Everyone knows that if you flip a coin, the odds of heads and tails are both 50-50. But there's a weird phenomenon in statistics that if you flip a coin 10 times, you most likely won't get exactly five heads and five tails. In fact, there's a way better chance that you end up with the heads and tails split at least seven, three or worse. Let me show you. I'm gonna flip this coin 10 times and then I'm gonna record the results. That time I got heads. Tails. So overall I got three heads and seven tails. And then I'm gonna keep repeating that test. You know, I'm really not getting any patterns here. In fact, I only got five heads one time. All these results just look random, like chaos. But let's graph how many times I got heads on each one and see if we can't get some kind of pattern here. I got three twice, four four times, five once, six twice, and seven one time. It still just looks really random though. It should really look like this. This is called a bell curve, or to be more technical, a Gaussian distribution. Something called the central limit theorem says that my results will look like this every single time. But my results don't look like that at all, so let's try it again, and again, and again. And none of them really look like that. So you know what we should do? We should put every test that we've done so far, put them all together on the same graph. This is 100 tests of 10 flips each. And now we're getting somewhere. You see, there's a theorem in statistics that says the more that you do something random, if that random thing has a probability, the more you do it, the closer it's gonna get to that probability. Out of chaos comes predictability and order. So now let's do that same thing again, but instead of 100 tests of 10 flips each, let's do 50,000 tests of 10 flips each. Obviously, I'm gonna use software to simulate this now. And this now looks like a perfect bell curve. And if we average this out, it averages out to pretty much exactly 50%. Well, 50.06. Everyone always focuses on that average percent, that that 50.06 will get closer and closer to 50% over time. This is what most people usually show. It's getting closer and closer to 50% over time. I actually want to look at it from another perspective though. Out of all those tests of 10 flips each, 53 times we got zero heads and 10 tails. And then 52 times we got 10 heads and no tails. So a small percentage of the time, it's really far away from our probability. So I want to show you something though. If we up the number of flips each time from 10 flips, we go to 100 flips, you see how the bell curve gets more narrow? Now with 100 flips, the lowest number of heads we got was 31%. We never got zero ever again. And we can just keep increasing that number of flips and the bell curve will keep getting more narrow. Now with 150 flips, the lowest we got was 36%. And if we keep increasing the number of flips each test, the bell curve just keeps getting more and more narrow until we have this with 200,000 coin flips, it looks like every single one averages out to exactly 50%. Our bell curve is just one vertical line at this point. So what this says is that you're basically never gonna flip a coin 200,000 times and not get 50% heads and 50% tails. This is where people might say, it takes 200,000 coin flips to converge to exactly 50%. But that's not really the whole story for two reasons. Yes, I mean, with 200,000 flips, it is always gonna be extremely close to 50%. But if we only flip a coin a thousand times, two thirds of the time, it's gonna fall within 49 and 51%. And the times that it falls outside of that range, it's not gonna be by very far. And then when we say 50%, we're rounding to the nearest whole percentage. But if we zoom into a couple decimal places, we get right back to our bell curve that we saw before. It's still fluctuating. It's not that it was exactly 50%. It's just that we needed more decimal places to be able to see what's truly going on there. And we can do the same thing that we did before. We'll just keep increasing the number of flips. The bell curve will keep getting more and more narrow until eventually it's right back to a vertical line again. So here we are at 2 billion flips and the results seem to be exactly 50% again when we round down to two decimal places. But again, if you zoom back in, we get right back to the same bell curve 
It's the same thing with all the tiny fluctuations. We just needed more decimal places to be able to see what's going on. The way that most people think about this is only that the more that you do something, the closer it's gonna be to the probability. And that's true, but the way that I like to think about it is the more you do something, the less far away you're able to be from the probability. Like with two billion coin flips, all of our results should fall within this range right here. If we did two billion coin flips and it landed over here, we'd know something's off. A concept called standard deviations helps to quantify this. For a normal distribution of a bell curve, 68% of the results will fall within right here. That's one standard deviation. 95% will fall within right here. That's two standard deviations. And then 99.7% will fall within right here. That's three standard deviations. So we know that if we flip a coin 100 times, the number of heads should fall within about 35 to 65, which is roughly three standard deviations. If you were to flip a coin 100 times and you got 20 heads, you could calculate that out. That comes out to six standard deviations away, which means it's really, really unlikely it occur about once every 36 million times. So when people say like, I spun a slot machine 500 times and I didn't get into the bonus round at all, it has to be rigged. We have to look at what the odds are to get in the bonus round. We can calculate that out and then calculate out how many standard deviations away their results were. And then we can calculate what the odds of that happening were. And one concept on a slot machine that a lot of people talk about is the 90% confidence factor. That's how manufacturers quantify the volatility of a slot machine. It means that if you took the bell curve of the results, 90% of the results are gonna fall in this range right here. 90% confidence factor is the same thing as a 1.65 standard deviation. You can create a graph like this for a thousand spins or 500 spins or 100,000 spins or a million spins. The bell curve is gonna look like this and then you can calculate out a 90% confidence factor for that number of spins. For example, here's a slot machine with all the confidence factors for this slot machine. I see a lot of people latching onto these numbers and they think that they have some special significance. Like I see right here, it says 10 million spins. So it takes 10 million spins to converge to its payback percentage. And then even then it's only 90% of the time. But without a tolerance attached to those numbers, these numbers don't really mean anything. What it does say is that for 10 million spins, it's gonna be within 0.47%, 90% of the time. And then the remaining 10% of the time, it's gonna fall just outside of that range. But these numbers, they're, they're pretty arbitrary. We can pick any number of spins and we can calculate out the confidence interval for this machine here. After a billion spins, it's gonna be within 0.047%, 90% of the time or after a trillion spins, it's gonna be within 0.0015%, 90% of the time. And just because they show the data and their calculations for a trillion spins, it doesn't mean that a trillion spins has any special significance to this machine. So we could pick any number at random. Let's say we pick 283,497 spins. We calculate that out. There's a 90% confidence factor of 2.82% for this machine here. That doesn't mean that 283,497 spins has any special significance. It's just what we happen to do our calculation on. So when people say that it takes a million or 10 million or a billion spins for it to hit its payback percentage, what they really mean is that it's close enough that we don't really care about the decimal places anymore. But I hope that helps you guys understand what the life of the machine really means. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. Before your next Vegas trip, get educated. Thanks for watching.